If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zin. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Boom! Bam! This is another episode of the Miraculous Gospel of Healing podcast. And we have a very exciting topic today. Holy Brother Tony started off in the last episode saying, you know, if you want to get some still going on, say God is sovereign. And God now in control of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could start off this episode with the same introduction. If you want to see some still going on, to stay in the camp, say that there is no war with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> no cosmic warfare. Uh, so, oh every, my gosh. Everybody said I get to sick. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get tar and feathered. We're going, exactly. So the so what are we talking about here with regards to the cosmic warfare of Satan? Co- co- cosmic warfare with Satan. Is that there is an idea amongst the believers in the church today, amongst many denominations. This is just this is not just one domin- one denomination. We're speaking about many denominations that have been promoting the idea, an idea that did not start in the scriptures. Let me just start with that. It did not start in the scriptures. It's an idea that actually came about over centuries, but has been adopted by westernized christianity when i say westernized christianity pre-roman christianity that is all over the world right now promoting the idea that we are at war with satan that he is a powerful being with a very elaborate kingdom some of his most decorated generals are fallen angels and his grown men are demons that are running around, taking down people and attacking you and looking to jump through the television if you watch the wrong program. Or if you, if you stand up in the wrong place, he will fill your, these demons will come into you and you will go home with demonic spirits and then be attacked and destroyed. And so we see in church, now this might sound like we're ridiculing it. To a certain percentage, we are. <laughs> right? But at the same time, the greater percentage here is actually bringing to your awareness that just this is, this is just, let's start with this simple law here. What you are most aware of you are serving as your God. Let me say that again. What you are most aware of, you are serving as your God. Therefore, if you are living, you get up in the morning and you pray, Oh Lord, thank you for this day. For five minutes and the next 23 hours and 55 minutes is about Satan and protecting yourself from Satan then Satan is your God. And in addition to that, there is nowhere in the Bible where Satan is actually seen as a formidable enemy or an an arch nemesis of God. There is only one God. And let me throw this in. He's not even a person, a entity, if you will. It's not even an actual person, an individual that you're having a problem with. Which, once again, the Western mindset is that Satan is this physical being. Yeah. And that is just not true. It, it is a perspective that, for those of you who may be asking, okay, so why then is there so much, why are we so aware of it in, the, in our culture today? 
many believe that this actually started in Rome, and this didn't start in Rome actually. This started before Rome. It actually started where, if you just do, you do, do some, histor some, some historical research into this, you would learn that this started when Israel went into captivity after Babylon, they went into Persian captivity. And in, per in Persian captivity, there is a particular religion, I'm not going to call it here just to, to, to highlight anybody, but there are particular religion that actually teaches that mankind can, has, can have two thoughts, a, a positive or a good thought and a, and a negative or evil thought. And that particular religion teaches that these two thoughts come from two separate gods. And these two separate gods are always fighting each other over dominion and over the soul of man. When Israel went into captivity, just to give you some context here, they went into captivity through Nebuchadnezzar, especially southern Israel. They went into captivity through Nebuchadnezzar, and he marched many of the captives back to, 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 to Babylon and installed them in Babylon. That was his military strategy. He come in, he destroys, he take captives, he march you back to, to, um, to Babylon. Now, unfortunately, when that happens, he didn't stop and say, hey, guys, would you like to take your Torah with you? You will be there a long time. <laughs> right? <laughs> it doesn't look like that. So he marched them back. They had no Torah. The temple was destroyed. And so these people had to depend on the... They had to depend on the elders who are actually called in the Bible, the ancients, to pretty much educate the generations coming up. But because there was no formal system like it was in Israel, the generations came up, they came up more liberally. And they began to be distracted by the cultures and the norms of the nation that they were, that they were submitted to, they were captives to. So when they went into Persia, that they interface their mythologies, which is actually what we just mentioned there, and their folklores and so on. And the elders of Israel made a decision, listen very carefully, in an attempt to keep Israelites from going off completely into the mythologies and the folklores and to the practices of these nations. The elders of Israel made a decision to incorporate the mythologies and the folklores and give it a, a, a Yahweh twist at the end so that they could keep their people within the camp and not that they just forget about being who they were as a nation and as a people. This passed down. So when they got into Rome, Rome didn't create it. Rome just formalized it. My point is that this perspective of Satan did not come from the scriptures, nor the cult of the scriptures. It didn't come from Moses. It came from pagan nations. Things that they were incorporated for their own reason. And so what you are doing is really promoting and perpetuating a pagan practice while you're saying, God, it is not true. It is simply not true. Hey, man. <laughs> too, too, uh, too much information there. <laughs> and uh, along with that, and this is why this is serious business, because because of this spiritual warfare idea that we are fighting Satan and his kingdom. That bleeds over into hating people. 100%. That bleeds into I am at war with a person because they are of Satan. They That's are so of the enemy. Now, I don't so care how you want to sugarcoat this. That is so true. But if you're in war, you hate the enemy. And if you see a person, an individual being controlled by an enemy, 
you hate the person, even though you're going to wrap it up in a cute little sugar-coated thing and say, well, you know, God, he so loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. What does that look like? That looks like you hate the sinner. And that is exactly how Christians treat those who don't believe what they believe. Because the Christian views them as the enemy. And therefore, they treat them with disrespect. They treat them without an ounce of love. They treat them as the enemy. And these are the ones that we are supposed to be pulling into the fold and loving the hell out of them. We're supposed to be reconciling them. How can you do that when you see them as the opponent? You cannot. And for those of you who actually might be listening to this, right? Uh, listen to this, whether in 2023 or, 20, or, or 2030. Let's hope that this perspective doesn't perpetuate till 2030. But whether you listen, when, whenever you listen to this, I want you to be intellectually honest with yourself. If you're promoting or perpetuating the idea that God loves this, loves this sinner but hates his sin, I have one question for you. If you believe that this person is controlled by Satan and promoting this idea, what is the point of contact to reach Satan? Not the person. So, technically, you are hating the person. You're hating the individual. We need to be intellectually honest because as Holy Brother Tony put it, you're sugarcoating it. As far as I as far as I stand, I tell you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're lying to yourself. Which is worse in a way because self deception is a self 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 deception is usually interpreted as truth. And you, you could have you may have gotten to the point where you believe what you're saying is true. And all you're doing is actually being Satan. Notice what I just said, right? You have become the Satan. Because let's go back to the garden. The garden is the garden of light and life. Therefore, anybody in the garden shows equity to life. And the promotion of life, health, and well-being, which is why you heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast all devils. If you are antagonizing life, then you are not in the garden. You are the serpent. You are a member of the serpent. According to the Bible, and this might sound harsh, but I mean, if the, if the prophets could actually refer to it like this, then I soon no reason why I shouldn't refer to it like that. They call you in the Bible a son of Belial. Without sinking to your cerebrum a little bit. A son of Belial. A son of Belial is the person that is actually promoting the serpent agenda, which is no equity and the manipulation of even what God says to get what they desire. And what we have in the, in the modern Christian community is the manipulation of these terms, manipulation of what God sa has said, just like the serpent speaking to the woman just to get your agenda forward. You cannot, and you are not, representing Christ if you are actually talking about this, this idea that there is this big cosmic war with Satan, and unfortunately, the point of contact for Satan is the destruction of human beings because they have a varying opinion. They themselves not necessarily taking anybody's life. They're not oppressing you, but you're actually attacking them. 
you have just actually taken on the identity of Satan. Instead of fulfilling what you say your Lord says, if you say Jesus is your Lord, then your Lord says you're supposed to be preaching reconciliation. That is your ministry. That is what you're here to do. That is your priesthood. Reconciliation to God. Because God has reconciled them. Even though you don't agree with their perspectives, God has already reconciled them to him. So if we, if we take it back to the cosmic war with Satan, unless we take that and we can swing it back to healing. Because apart from where this perspective comes from, what you are most aware of, you're making your God. And if you believe that you're in warfare against this Satan, then technically, your constant awareness of Satan is making Satan your Elohim, which means he's no more powerful than you. And your spirit, all research actually shows that what you believe to be true, your spirit frames itself to match it. And if you believe that Satan, you are at war with Satan, then you have convinced yourself that Satan can attack your body and you have to go to war with him to get him off. Mm -hmm. Then you and only you are, prevent, are preventing your body from being healed. You are extending it. It's what I call the functional truth. It is the functional truth. It's Straight not the talk. spiritual truth. It's the truth that you believe. Therefore, that is the truth that you're walking in. And many people aren't healed because of this truth. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, how can you be in God's rest when you're at war? There is no rest in war. No. And then people get confused and say, well, but there's evil on this earth. The evil on the earth is what comes from the hearts of men. Exactly. Exactly. Who, what is, and this, to me, it's clearer than crystal. What does Paul say is at enmity with God? Hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mm -hmm. say, the devil. Right. <laughs> what does he say? The carnal mind, to the speak King mind. James English. Yeah, uh, the carnal mind. That's where the enmity of God is, not a being. Now, because of the way the Western mindset works and because of the way scriptures were tainted with wherever there's Satan, there's a capital S making a proper noun. Look, that was man's <laughs> doing. That was religion doing. Wherever there's the devil, a capital D, that is propelling the myth. Because guess what? If, if you, you can unite people with a common enemy. True. Constantine. True. Very true. What Constantine did to control people was what? Promote the fact of the devil. There is a common enemy. What do you think Catholicism did? The same thing. Right, right, right. They yeah. promoted the devil to give people the common enemy that they feared more than the emperor. <laughs> To unite themselves under the emperor. It was a political move. 
Do you disagree with me, my holy brother Zane? No, I don't at all. <laughs> I, 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 I was actually just recently having a conversation with one of the master mentors of the Institute. And we were actually speaking along the same lines. And one of the things that one of the one of the, 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 the perspectives that we share, and I hear that you, you share the same perspective, is now that at the Institute we have a very clear understanding as to what the biblical narrative is about and what these authors were speaking from and have a very clear understanding as to spiritual function. It is, it will be naive of me to say that what has been promoted in Western Christianity happened on its own. It would be na very naive. What, what, where the church has arrived in the understanding of devil and Satan and all of these different things, and all of the things in particular that has no foundation with the scriptures, it will, it is beyond, it is, it is, it is beyond the idea of happenstance that these doctrines could be so carefully crafted. They're very carefully crafted. And not only are they crafted, but they have very, very good um, shields around them. Right. That keeps, that keeps you from considering leaving the circle. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it, it's, it's, it's too well-crafted for someone to say that these perspectives will happen stance. It's too well crafted for anyone to say that these things that we are looking at are outside of outside of manipulation. That's the same thing as people saying that this universe happened into into perfect right. life forms. Right. It's the same thing as saying that. So when I look at this whole idea, even considering Satan and, how, and, the, and the ideas that are promoted, these things are, or there are things that Christians come up with on their own, but there are a lot of things also simultaneously that have been promoted. And the only way for them to promote it with such accuracy, you have to have an understanding as to what truly is the truth. Right. And therefore, that comes right back down to the control of the masses. Yep. To be able to promote them in a way where the law can actually get you to follow to a certain extent. But if you get persons to believe that something is real and this thing is going to come for you or they're going to face a horrific situation that is supernatural you would get everybody to obey comfortably because they're trying to keep themselves from falling into horrific situations. They're trying to secure their safety. And if you really look at how this thing has been crafted, it actually shows that these perspectives have been promoted. <clears throat> they knew what was true and they promoted it so that they can get the masses to follow what the one on top says which is where the whole idea of Roman Catholicism and, and all of these things, it, it, you could see the promotion of it. Like when, when you look at certain religions, you can see clearly yes. that it not only is manipulation, but you can see clearly that they have an understanding of the Bible. Like, exactly. For, like, for example, in the temple system, you had the high priest that would take on God's name, and you had the other priests that would actually be considered like angels in the covenantal dynamic. But they are also taking on God's name. Look at the world today with regards to certain religions. You have the Pope that functions just like the high priest and everybody else in different parts of the world calling us. And you may approach them and say, Father, following the same, the same system 
that was actually they, they came into contact with through the temple in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. These things show you that they have a good idea as to what this thing was. Yep. And it also reveals how they've used the same thing to manipulate and control the masses. So I am I am of the on the of the opinion that this is a control mechanism and believers need to start, especially in an era like this era, that you have so much access to information. Unfortunately, with access to information, you have a bombardment of lies as well. <laughs> you can't get past that because everybody had the freedom of speech and freedom of their content. But I would encourage you to, to be logical. Just be logical, right? If we have a script here that says there is one God, creator of heaven and it, possessor and creator of heaven and it, then how is it you are saying that if there is one God, how can you even entertain the idea that there is another God, another person that is actually giving God competition? If he's giving God competition, then there is not one God. There are two gods. That is out after God's people that God cannot protect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's literally what they, that's what literally was being promoted. And, and that's then if, what in fear. if you come against that, then, oh, you're just not spiritually mature. You can't, you can't possibly understand this uh, because you're spiritually not mature. Really? Okay. So if, so let, let, let me just respond to that with another statement here. If John says, as he is, so are we in this world. Then what you're also saying, if that connects us to Christ directly, what you're also saying is that if we are having this experience where Satan, God cannot protect us from Satan in the way that we have been teaching, then what we're also saying is that Jesus on the throne is not secure as a king. He is also in battle with Satan, and Satan can take the throne any time. If that is the case, here's what I tell you. Find a different king. There you go. <laughs> Let me just be straight. Because that king... Yes, is, but is not, not only that, but there are main denominations that don't believe that God's kingdom, that Jesus is actively ruling today. Wow. There are denominations... They're still looking for the kingdom to come. And that wow. Jesus is not on the throne. Wow. <laughs> Jesus okay. is on the throne. Those, 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 those denominations that believe that, do they believe that Jesus ascended? Right. They, they believe that Jesus ascended and has yeah, to does. descend before he takes the kingdom back over. In other words, he has become human again. But he have his body already? What, what do you want to again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Exactly. Um, interesting theory. You've never heard that before? I don't think so. I Trust me. I, <laughs> that is an interesting theory that way. Okay. They, they don't believe the kingdom of God has fully come. They don't okay. believe Jesus is sitting on the throne as king. Let me guess. That comes, they, from, the pers that comes from the perspective that they believe <laughs> that peace is just supposed to be given to them without responsibility. Right. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And then, and then you have the whole Come on, read my mind. Millennium? See that. On the millennium ring? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have been out of touch with these doctrines for so long that it's something, it's something strange right now, yes? Well, well trust me, though. as I'm ministering to people, people are telling me this stuff, and that's how I learn about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, interesting. That's a very interesting interpretation. But for those, if 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 there is anybody listening to to what we say in in this episode, in this episode, somebody when I say anybody listen, anybody who is taught that listening to this episode, I would encourage you to go back to Daniel chapter seven and see how Jesus's ascension is actually the fulfillment of Daniel chapter seven. For him to actually come to his ascension was actually where he was coming up on the cloud, which is in the fulfillment of Daniel 7, that he is installed at the right hand of the Father. This is why, which is why Stephen saw him on the throne in, in, right. confirm, in confirmation that he was actually seated at the right hand of the Father. Which is also covered by Peter in Acts 2. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. So there, there are plenty of scriptures that state Jesus is king, acting king, now yeah and the fullness I, of the kingdom has come yeah we are not waiting for jesus to reappear in the flesh as a pure man if you believe that really you're going to struggle to see healing in your body also because healing is only possible because jesus is at the, at the, at the throne holy brother tony is healing right now I heal as well for myself and for others all over the world. So the healing in itself proves that he's on the throne. Amen. If he, if he was not on the throne, we would have no authority over anything here. We're waiting for, for him to come and install his authority. Then your dog's dead. <laughs> <laughs> your dog's dead. <laughs> We've co we've covered this pretty deep, right? And so, and and just how in the world can you trust in God and be in God's rest and be in war at the same time? Mm -mm. There is no resting in war. No, you can never have rest in war. If you if you're in war, you're not resting. You're actually striving to make it happen. That's why there's PTSD and all this other stuff, because the human body is not made to be in warfare twenty four oh seven. Which many people that believe this patula, they are in warfare constantly, with the exception of maybe ten minutes they spend in prayer. The rest of the time they're in warfare. That's why their life has no balance and no rest. And that 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 actually causes them to to, to fall into very serious mental health issues as well. And I want to point to where we started with this. If you're in warfare, then you're mistreating people instead of showing them Christ. Okay. You're putting up a wall against Christ because you're not showing them any love. That's true. And all you have to do is travel on Facebook and see how Christians treat atheists when I, a Christian should be the most loving person on the face of this earth. All I could do with that is just shake my head, yes? S-M-H, shake my head. Because when you see Christians on Facebook... The two things that stand out in, uh, 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 for this, uh, for, for, from my perspective at least, for me, two things that stand out about Christians on Facebook. Number one, they are the most opinionated people on the planet. Yes. And number two, they are the most, they are the, they are the biggest Enemies to people using Jesus to justify it. Jesus yes. using Jesus to justify their hate and their contempt. They literally use Jesus to justify hate and contempt. Yes. These are the people in particular, like just recently, and I am saying this openly because uh, I since I sincerely, I sincerely believe that Christians need to do better. Just recently, it was brought to my attention that they actually want to pass a law in Israel 
to stop Christians from doing what they're doing in Israel. And why is everybody saying, warn Christianity? Let me just put this out here. For any nation to get to the point of considering to pass a law, is because what you're doing is harassing the people. Yes. You're showing them no equity. And feeling justified doing it. And feeling justified with your harassment. And then I turn around and ask somebody, just recently, I even put this post on Facebook. I said, if somebody of a different religion was actually approaching you and doing the same thing that you're seeing, you're preaching doing, what would you say? Please get silent. Obviously, it gets silent. Because if another religion is doing it, you're saying that is terrorism. This is an act of terror. The people are actually harassing you. You wouldn't like it for yourself, but because you say it's from Jesus, everybody's supposed to accept the same thing from you. It, they have a right to pass these legislations to stop you because you are harassing the people. And you know something in particular? I come across, scroll, scroll, scroll on TikTok, and I come across videos of Christians turning on the, the camera on their phone, stopping Israelis on the road and antagonizing them in the name of Jesus for not believing in Jesus. Where the heck in the Bible is it written that you go and you antagonize people? What you're supposed to be doing is healing the sick, resurrecting the dead, casting out the devils that, 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 that they're oppressing them, that's that, that the, the mental oppression, getting them free so that they can want to know how, how are you doing that? If you you're are. healthy and everyone else is sick, now they're going to look and say, wait a minute. And that's how, exactly what happened. Exactly. When so the you... world shut down, <laughs> myself and others, <clears throat> my whole church stayed open for starters. And we were praying for those who were sick. And they're like, oh, that's what's supposed to be happening. That is exactly what it's supposed to be. If you even look at the gospels, it parallels preaching the gospel and healing the sick. It's a, it, it's a parallel. You cannot preach the gospel without healing. Without doing something that represents God. It you has cannot to be, antagonize has to be those that you're sent for. Watch me. It just vexed my spirit to see Christians going into Israel, stopping Israelis on the road. You're going by rabbis. Big boy, these scriptures come from these people. What? You could go and tell them about their scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and what gets me is how Christians would stay on street corners hollering, you're going to hell, blah, 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 blah. And they call that preaching in a way. <laughs> but yet, if, if there was a Muslim, if there was a Satanist, if there was any other religion on a street corner, they would be picketing city hall. Yeah. Ain't that just and fair? <laughs> the equity. Bar. That's not your right, folks. You, we are supposed to love people, walk in the power, see people's lives changed, put them on a path to freedom. Yeah. Yeah. But the very ones trying to correct everybody, they're not walking in freedom. They're walking in chains and wanting to put chains, those same chains, on other people. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. All well right. Said. This has been a long one, yeah, but, but a much needed, <laughs> necessary rethink what you believe. Rethink it indeed. Ask yourself, am I walking in a functional truth made hmm. by a religious culture hmm. or am I walking in the spiritual truth? That's a good question. And I will add nothing to that. That's a good question, right? Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Boom. Bam. <laughs>